Hola, everyone. Are you ready for a Viva Grande escape in some lugares hermosos in Spain? Or should I say, beautiful places in Spain? Feel the enchantment and magnificence as you explore these Spanish structures that every traveler should visit. I have included a link in the description below for amazing discounts for trips, flights, and accommodations so you can start exploring Spain or any other countries on your bucket list. Your first stop is the Sagrada Familia and Gaudi site in Barcelona. FYI, the Art Nouveau architectural movement was advanced by Antony Gaud to the point of ridiculousness, according to some. His extravagant and absurd constructions in Barcelona have become recognizable monuments and some of the most popular tourist destinations in this Catalan metropolis. The Sagrada Familia Basilica, also known as the Holy Family Church of the Atonement of the Temple Expiatori de la Sagrada Familia is the most prominent. It is one of Europe's most unusual churches and is still being built, so from its tower you can observe the work being done below. In Gaudi's House Mila, his final and most well-known secular work, you may look in vain for absolutely straight lines. It resembles a piece of sculpture more than a practical structure. Make sure you climb to its roof because it is said that Darth Vader's likeness was inspired by the chimneys there. On a hilltop, Park Gwil offers you views of the city and its gardens, which are framed by exotic animals like salamanders, fish, and an octopus, as well as patterns made of vivid ceramic charred mosaics. By the entryway, a whimsical towered house is largely covered in vibrant ceramic tiles. The next in your itinerary is the Great Mosque of Cordoba, or the La Mezquita. The Great Mosque of Cordoba, also known as La Mezquita or the Main Mosque of Western Islam, is one of the largest mosques in the world and the pinnacle of Moorish construction in Spain. The Great Mosque is one of the two most magnificent specimens of Islamic art and architecture in Western Europe, despite later changes that removed much of its center to make room for a Catholic cathedral. The flower-adorned patios in the Judera or the old Jewish quarter close to the Great Mosque the Palacio de Viana, a 15th century aristocratic palace, and the Alcazar de los Reyes Cristianos, the former caliphal palace that Catholic King Fernando III took over in the 13th century, are some of Cordoba's other top tourist attractions you can see. The Judera is filled with winding, narrow lanes, little squares, and low whitewashed dwellings that will give the area a Moorish feel that it has inherited from its past. Next itinerary is the Prado and Paseo del Artes of Madrid. The Prado alone ranks among the greatest art museums in the world for the wealth of its holdings, making it one of Madrid's most popular tourist destinations. Yet, when you combine the mile-long tree-lined promenade of Madrid with the Reina Sofia National Art Museum, the Thyssen Bornemisza National Museum, and the Caixa Forum, you may have the biggest concentration of precious art masterpieces anywhere in the world. It makes sense that this is referred to as El Paseo del Arte or the Boulevard of the Arts. The Prado erected another 12 galleries in 2009 to showcase a collection of works by Goya and other late 19th century artists following a 2007 expansion that doubled its exhibition area. Just a trivia, the Prado houses the largest collection of Spanish art in the entire world, spanning a remarkable range of styles from early 20th century avant-garde to 12th century medieval masterpieces, El Greco, Velázquez, and Goya's works from Spain's golden period are of particular interest. The medieval murals and retablos paintings by Flemish and Dutch artists make sure to see the fantastical world of Hieronymus Bosch as well as pieces by Rubens and Bruegel. Another itinerary is the Alhambra and General Life Gardens of Granada. No matter how much you've read about or how many images you've seen of Granada's Alhambra palaces, it will still leave you speechless. The royal palace of the Nazarid dynasty, also known as Al-Andalus or Andaluca, served as the pinnacle of culture and civilization in medieval Europe and is considered the artistic high point of Spain's Islamic era. 
Although the Alhambra complex consists of a number of structures, including towers, walls, gardens, and a mosque, the Nazarene palaces indescribably beautiful stone carvings, delicate filigrees, spectacular tile-lined ceilings, graceful arches, and tranquil courtyards will stay with you forever. Despite this, the adjacent palace constructed for Emperor Charles V is the best example of high Renaissance architecture in Spain. Even in its unfinished state, the tiered gardens of general life also provide a tranquil haven from the opulence and stunning vistas of the remaining Alhambra. The Alhambra palaces should be visited at least once in a full day and tourists should plan to spend many days exploring Granada. The UNESCO listed Albacene, a historic Moorish neighborhood, the 16th century Capilla Royal de Granada, and the Sacramento neighborhood where flamenco performances take place in gypsy caverns, are some further features of Granada. Your next stop is the Guggenheim Museum, Bilbao. You actually need to see this building in person to fully appreciate it. No photograph has ever done this symphony of shapes, which are so active they almost look ready to take flight. Justice Blocks of limestone and wavy titanium sheets were used by American architect Frank Gehry to subvert the idea of the modern building. His success was so complete that he gave rise to two new terms, the Bilbao effect or the capacity of the city to change its fortunes by erecting a single world-class structure and architurism, a whole sector of the travel industry centered around contemporary architectural landmarks. The museum's 24,000 square meter galleries house its own modern art holdings as well as temporary exhibitions and rotating displays. The works of Ansel Kiefer, Willem de Kooning, Mark Rothko, and Andy Warhol are among the highlights that you can see. The Michelin-starred gastronomic establishments in Bilbao include Atelier Ex Cenobi, which serves inventive haute cuisine, Ola Martin Berasategui, which serves modern Spanish cuisine based on fresh market ingredients, and Nerua at the Guggenheim Museum. Our next stop is the Santiago de Compostela Cathedral. Since the medieval ages, Pilgrims' ultimate goal has been Santiago de Compostela's beautiful Cathedral of Santiago, or St. James, which was constructed to contain and honor the saint's relics. In addition to continuing to be a popular tourist attraction in northern Spain's Galicia area, the medieval town of Santiago de Compostela continues to draw on modern-day pilgrims. It is also one of the finest examples of early Romanesque architecture, and it was constructed between 1060 and 1211, and while the outside underwent a Baroque change in the 16th and 18th centuries, the interior retains the most authentic early Romanesque features. As you enter the west front through one of the most stunning church facades in all of Spain, you'll see both of these eras in action. When you enter, you will be facing the Portico de la Gloria, which was previously the old west front but is now hidden by the 18th century front. One of the world's largest and most exquisite collections of Romanist sculpture can be found in this triple gateway. The beautifully designed Capilla Mayor, which was constructed over the Tomb of the Apostle, serves as the interior's focal point. A wooden statue of the Apostle from the 13th century that is lavishly decorated with precious metals and stones sits in the middle of the high altar made of jasper, alabaster, and silver. Narrow steps on either side lead up behind the statue so that pilgrims can kiss the Apostle's cloak and contemplate their journey. The Apostle's remains are kept in a silver coffin in a vault beneath the altar. Our next stop is the Plaza Mayor, Madrid. Since the 16th century, when Philip II commissioned San Lorenzo de El Escorial architect Juan de Herrera, the pulsating Plaza Mayor has been an integral part of Madrid's daily life. Take note, it is the beating heart of Spain's dynamic capital city. It is now one of Madrid's most popular tourist destinations and has historically hosted ceremonial events like the coronation of kings, canonization of saints, and the burning of heretics, as well as open-air entertainment like chivalric contests and bullfights. Madrid's living room is defined by the cafes that pour out into the plaza's stone pavement, which is only for pedestrians and the restaurants that are shaded by its arcades. Both locals and visitors use these popular gathering spots. 
One of the greatest spots for you to stay in Madrid is near the Plaza Mayor, which serves as the social hub of the city. The four-star Catalonia Las Cortes is a short walk from the Plaza Mayor and is popular with families due to its roomy guest rooms and art enthusiasts due to its proximity to the Prado Museum. One more spot is the Plaza de España and Parque de Maria Luisa Seville. The Plaza de España is a striking semicircular pavilion flanked by colonnades that were constructed for the Ibero-American Exhibition of 1929 to honor the many regions of Spain. Above the lengthy pool, which is divided by bridges, are stunning panels made of bright ornamental tiles that depict each province in Spain. It's a well-liked location to take a stroll or rent a boat and row around the pool and below the bridges. The huge Parque de Maria Luisa, a half-mile expanse of gardens, meadows, and shaded paths running alongside the river opposite historic Seville is centered on the Plaza de España. You can take a journey in a horse-drawn carriage or rent a pedal car. The park is always busy, but on Sundays it is packed with families. The ideal way to view the enormous trees, flower beds, pools, gazebos, and artificial rock mountains with a waterfall is to wander across the park and take the side routes into the gardens that are encircled by hedges. A modest but well-stocked archaeology museum containing Visigoth jeweled crosses and ancient gold work may be found at the park's far end. Next in the itinerary is the beaches of Gran Canaria. The whole of Gran Canaria's southern shore is lined with golden sand beaches, making it the largest up in the Canary Islands. Beach de las Canteras is the capital city of Las Palmas, is well liked by families for its tranquil waters and is shielded by a volcanic rock natural breakwater. The Beach del Inglés in Mas Palomas, which is the largest and liveliest beach, is surrounded by a variety of cafes, restaurants, stores, playgrounds, and other amusements that you can all try. One of the natural beauties of the archipelago, a wide protected region with enormous sand dunes, is located at one end. They are continually shifting since they are molded by the wind and the sea and can reach heights of 12 meters. You can ride a camel through this barren and otherworldly area to complete the desert fantasy. And if you love diving, you'll fall in love with this place because the water is so clean and relatively warm. Arinaga has an underwater park while Beach del Inglés and other coastal locations have diving schools. Or you can take a glass-bottomed boat trip and observe the fish and other marine life. Sailing and windsurfing are other prominent water sports on the south coast. Are you ready to go to Spain? I have put a link in the description below so you can find the best discounts for trips, flights, and accommodations. Start exploring new places and creating the best memories with family and friends. So start packing now. Push that notification bell to be updated on our next travel videos. And until next time, safe travels.